highlighting the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on kindergarten readiness. The first of its kind research published in JAMA Pediatrics was conducted in collaboration with Cincinnati Children's Hospital and that city's public school system, and it showed 70% of students were not ready for kindergarten when assessed in 2021. Each Tuesday here on Voices, we welcome Dr. Steve Turkovich, president of Oshai Children's Hospital for our Ask the Pediatrician segment. Great to have you back. Thank you for having me. And I want to start there asking you about that. There has been so much discussion about learning loss related to the pandemic. This is interesting because this is readiness for kindergarten, which suggests something different, right? Yep. It's not that kids weren't learning in school like we wish they had been um, had it not been for the pandemic. What does this tell you? What's the takeaway as a pediatrician? Well, you know, it's not surprising. Young children are like sponges and they learn in a variety of different ways. They learn from their environment. So they're learning how to read, they're learning social cues and all of those touch points they have with family members in uh, preschool programs, in, on TV, all those sorts of things really impact their learning. When we closed um, and stopped them from having those opportunities, even uh, relating to different family members, mm -hmm. not going to preschool, they lost all those opportunities to learn and, and, and understand how to regulate behavior and understand how to socialize in different, uh, different ways. So we learned from this study what we probably already knew is that less children were ready for kindergarten in 2021. The other thing that was really surprising about the study was they used 2018 as the baseline mm -hmm. and in 2018 only one in three kids was ready for kindergarten. So that tells me the baseline really wasn't good and we have a lot of opportunity to help kids through that early childhood uh, time time period to get them ready for kindergarten. We could talk a whole half hour or longer about learning loss of all different ages. Um, so more to come on that. Um, we get a bunch of questions for Dr. Turkovich and try to, to mesh some of them together. And melatonin always comes up from people. Um, you know, you think it's a good option to help your kids get a good night's sleep. The CDC, though, says between 2019 and 2022, nearly 11,000 kids under the age of five visited the ER because of melatonin ingestion. Um, what do you tell parents about melatonin? So I think the important thing to know is melatonin is a supplement. It is not a medication. And the reason it, that's important is because medications are governed by the FDA. So they make sure that every medication that you buy, Tylenol, Advil, any of those things has in it what it says it does. Melatonin as a supplement is not regulated. So when you're taking a gummy or a pill, you don't know if it actually has that number of milligrams on it that it says it does. Mm. Secondly, as with any medication, you want to do it, use it under the direction of your pediatrician or a sleep medicine doctor because you want to make sure you get the right dose and also take it at the right time. If you take it too late or too close to bedtime, it actually can cause insomnia. So using it under the direction of a physician is really important. Good stuff. As always, Dr. Steve Turkovich, president of Osha Children's Hospital. Thanks. We'll see you next week. Thank you.